Everybody says it's the color, or it's the texture, it's the, the look of the stone, obviously. You know, it has depth, it's natural, every piece is unique. But you go to an architect's office and you put out the stone samples, and the first thing everybody does is touch them. I was born in Belgium. We left when the Germans uh, invaded Belgium in May of 1940. And we went from Belgium to France to Spain and then from Spain to Portugal. What happened was my mother and I were walking down the street and I saw that there were workers paving the street with marble. And I was amazed. Because when I was in Belgium, the only places where you saw marble were museums, the King's Palace. It was something that I considered to be very special. And I told my mother, these people must be very rich. She said, no, they're not very rich. It's just that marble here is very cheap. For sure, since Walker Zanger is the oldest luxury and tile stone company in the United States, that this milestone is very important. There is no other company in the U.S. that has been around as long as Walker Zanger and has done the work that Walker Zanger has um, and is preeminent as a brand in the marketplace today. After I got out of the Army, I got a job at an export company. They said, we want you to start an import department. I said, what do you want me to import? They said, we don't care. Said, okay, I know something that I can import. He said, what do you want to import? I said, I'm going to import marble from Portugal. <laughs> he, he saw the potential of a, of a great market there, and his bosses were not willing to finance it. So he decided that he would go off on his own. Marvin Walker, who was working in the export department, says, I heard you're going into business for yourself. He says, would you like a partner? I told him this, the first year, every penny we make stays in the business. No salaries, no nothing. He had a wife who worked, she supported him. I had a wife who worked, she supported me. I saw an ad in the newspaper, a company that had wrought iron tables with glass tops. And I said, suppose I gave you marble table tops and that you could put them on the same wrought iron basis and you could sell those tables for the same price, $39, and make a good profit. So they gave me an order right then and there for $10,000 worth of tabletops. The shipment came in. On Monday morning, there was a line outside the store around the block. Within two hours, they were sold out. I went to the big stores, Macy's, Gimbel's, Sears Roebuck, and they all gave me orders. At the end of that year, we had a million dollars in the bank. Not only did we go into other industries, but we branched out in other territories. My family has been in the business since 1958. My father moved from New York to Los Angeles to help start the West Coast operation of Walker's Anger. 
we needed much more than Portugal could deliver. And we knew that Italy is the big center, the marble center of the world. My first trip to a quarry, we went to Europe when I was five. What I remember in particular was in those days they had these guys called squadratore, who were guys who would square, squadrare means to square, square the blocks. And they were little Italian guys with arms the size of your leg and, you know, tan and muscled. And so there was this squadratore working and when they were, I was five years old and they said, get up on the block and take a picture with this chisel. It was my most vivid childhood or earliest vivid childhood memory. Cara questa sera vado al Mica Club Metti su qualcosa e vieni pure tu Troveremo amici lì ed allegria in quantità Mica Club è la felicità These were old family ties that went back generations. And the artisans that worked with it had years of apprenticeship and education in their trade. Le più belle stanno al Mica Club. Champagne. It would take normally two to three weeks to saw a block of marble. Eventually, they found ways to saw marble with diamond blade, and diamond being the hardest material available, went through the marble in 24 hours sometimes. But now that they could saw marble in 3 8 inch, they could make lightweight tiles, small tiles that you could use like ceramic tiles. That was a revolutionary breakthrough at the time. In the early days of the stone business, everything was very thick and, and needed to be cut by specialized stone cutters. And now it could be installed by any tile contractor. The tile that we make and design ourselves has an element of hand work to it. The reason for that is not that we can do it better by hand. I mean, you could conceivably have more consistency if all of this was done by machine. But the hand element makes every installation different. It makes it unique and makes it a little more beautiful than something that's mass produced. We were working with a new factory in Mexico. And this factory was trying to combine the best of handmade tile tradition and also incorporating modern technology to make the tile superior. But the tile was still hand-pressed, hand-glazed, and those were techniques that have been used in tile making for thousands of years. It's very difficult to combine the industrial production and the handmade qualities um, and make tile on a consistent basis, but that's one thing that has been integral to Walker's Engineer's success. As design develops and as a market grows and matures, we have to look for different things that you can use as a tile surface. early days of the company, we were producing product that other people designed. What grew out of that is that Walker Zanger started to develop our own designs. So we had, not only were we working with architects and designers to realize their designs, but all of a sudden now we were creating our own designs and we were now a source for architects and designers to use our materials in their projects. <laughs> The 
two or three years after I was at the company and started working on you know, the first collection that I designed, um, I think that pretty much hooked me. But there's something about the creative process, beginning with a blank piece of paper. I mean, that's a really exciting part of this job, is starting out with an idea and then seeing that idea come to life and then seeing that idea in someone's kitchen. For sure, you can't be successful by being safe in design. You have to try new things and you have to sometimes fail. But when you look back to, you know, Leon Zenger starting to import marble tabletops and the fact that it was very difficult to, you know, put marble tile in your home if you wanted it. And ceramic tile was very limited to, you know, certain colors or certain palettes. And now you look at in the market and see the plethora of things that are available and how the market has changed. We work really diligently when we create the products to make a collection where all the parts and pieces work together, where there's a lot of different things that you can do with the product and it all makes sense. Probably a once in a lifetime job in terms of attention to historical detail. Bond Street here in New York, hand-tooled limestone, the entire building is clad in. In the Metropolitan Museum in New York City, which was fantastic. We recently completed the Tiffany store in Kazakhstan. Viceroy Hotel in Anguilla. Now, when you have a company that's been around for 60 years and you know the owners are still involved in running the business and there are people here who have worked here for 20 and 30 and 40 years and the years of experience they have in working with Tile and Stone and selling Tile and Stone and project managing it is a huge advantage. The first thing my father tried to communicate to me or tr tried to try to instill in me, I think, are the you know his principles for running a business: um, honesty, fairness, fairness to your supplier, and fairness to your customer. We are a, a company uh, that survives because we are hardworking. The whole idea about being happy when you're working is that you like what you do. And that's, that's why I'm happy. And that's why I'm still in business. <laughs>